everybody and welcome to another On One Workflow video. My name is Mike Long from Portland Pinups and today we're going to do a spring into summer video. I went through my archives to find the summerist shot I could find and came across this lovely portrait of Brittany and Nick from their wedding a few years ago. So let's take a closer look. First of all we're going to pull it into the develop module. Okay so the first thing I like to do with all portraits is to turn on lens correction. So in overall settings, down here at the bottom, click on lens correction, and it should automatically find your lens, whichever you're using. In this particular case, I was using the 50mm 1.4 from Canon. And if I turn that off and on, you can see the barrel distortion that it is removing, which just makes the portrait a little nicer to work from. Next, I like to crop my image. I don't particularly like the 4x3 ratio. I prefer a 4x5 ratio. So I'm going to click on the crop tool. And up here under freeform, I'm going to click and pull down to 4x5 or 8x10. Now it's given me a bounding box to work from, so I'm just going to pull this down slightly within the bounding box. I really like this clump of out-of-focus foliage here. I want to keep that there. I don't want to pull it out completely. And that looks like a nice crop to me. So I'm just going to click Return to commit that. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is look at white balance. I always shoot auto white balance when I shoot weddings. Let's have a look and see if we can make it a little bit nicer. My, in my head, I see this portrait as a very warm and soft portrait. So let's see if we can make it a bit warmer. Daylight is going to be a bit too cool. Cloudy warms it up a bit. Shade makes it really nice and warm. And I think that's where I want to go with this one. So let's put it on shade. And next I want to look at the, uh, the, the highlights in this veil are very blown out. It's actually a really nicely exposed portrait. If we look at the histogram, we can see it's a bit overexposed on the white, but we have got this huge clump of white in the sky here. That's what's causing that. The rest of the portrait isn't a bad exposure but I have overexposed the veil here. And all we're gonna do is pull down the highlights all the way down and we can see, maybe not all the way down, about there. And that's brought some detail back into the highlights. Hasn't affected the sky too much and we're gonna sort that out much later on. It is slightly underexposed. I think I might pull it up a little bit just for brightness. Let's go about there. And maybe we'll add some contrast as well. I do like bumping up my portraits with con contrast. Something about there. So if we take a preview before and after of where we've come and where we are, we can see that within just a few seconds, we've done some basic correction to make the portrait look rather nice. I think oh, we can go a bit better than that. Let's make it look even more stunning. So now let's take the portrait over to the effects panel. Okay, here we are in On1 Raw Effects. And the first thing I should mention is that On1 comes loaded with tons of presets already. If we click this little couple of arrows down the bottom left of your screen here, it shows you all the presets that come loaded with it on one. There's tons of cool ones to play with. I'm going to show you mine. They're available in the on one store right now, the Mike Long presets. There's some really cool stuff to play with. Let's try a couple and see what they look like. So this one's called Bright Slide Film. Very nice. It's got some grain to it, a really big pop. That's quite nice. I do also like black and white. So let's, look at, let's look at a nice soft black and white. See that there looks great. First of all, it looks really classic and nice and soft. That would make a great canvas. And what about this one here, creamy highlights, I like this one a lot. So this is kind of the vision I had for the portrait anyway, but I think we should go ahead and show you how to create this using the filters with an on one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo those filters and get us back to zero. Now with an on one, let me just close this down and put it out of the way. You can stack filters one on top of the other and build them as you go, and you can also customize each one and change the settings. As soon as you apply a filter, you're not committed to that one filter forever. You can change it and tweak it as you like. So let's start off. We're going to add a filter, and the first thing I'm going to do is add some contrast to this image. Now, I put some contrast in the develop, but that's overall contrast. I'm going to use something called dynamic contrast. Now, there are several different settings you can use. Natural, surreal, it's a bit too much, soft. I'm going to go ahead and play with these sliders and bring it up to where I want to have it. So I'm going to small contrast, I like to have quite a lot. Medium and large, I'm going to put at about 15 or so each. And if I show you a preview of before and after, you can see it's making it crunchy and a bit sharper. I also like to mess with the shadows a little bit. If I show you the slider and you can see what it's doing, if I bring them up, it opens the shadows and we close them down like that. I like to go about halfway on this one. I want to add even more contrast to the image and make it look nice and funky. Okay, let's add another filter. And this time I'm going to choose sunshine, which is exactly what I want it to look like. Nice and sunny. I was in fact shooting straight into the sun, but because of my settings, we can't see any of that in the background. Lots of different presets to go for. I'm going to come down and I think I'm going to go between sun glow or sunshine. 
Sunglow makes their, can you see that's making their faces a little soft? I don't really want that. I want to keep the faces nice and sharp. Sunshine, if I click it off and on, you can see it's just giving that nice little pop of sunshine. Let's actually take the amount up a little bit. I want a nice, nice pop to it, but I don't want it too much. If we add too much glow, you can see that's where we're going to get all soft and a little bit 1980s. We don't really want that. Okay, that's good. I'm happy with that filter. Okay, we're getting closer to where I feel this portrait should be. But there's a couple more things I want to do. First of all, I'm going to add another filter. I'm going to use textures. And the one I'm particularly interested in here is under light leaks. So we've got lots of different ones to choose from. I'm going to click leak. And preloaded, there are six different light leaks. And the one that I think suits this portrait well is light leak two. And if I flick that off and on, you can see what a lovely soft glow it's given to the portrait. And again, within each panel, you can adjust it to your personal preference. We can make the brightness more or less. I want it about there. I don't want it too much on him. If we bring it all the way down, you can see it comes off him completely. But if we do it too much, it's more on him and down here. And I don't want that. I want it about there. That's quite nice. You can also alter the saturation to make it a bit cleaner or a bit stronger. I liked it where it was. And you can change the hue to match your portrait. I want it back where it was because that looks quite nice. Maybe a touch warmer there. That's quite nice. I was trained as a wedding photographer using film and I really love the film look. And one of the things that gives film its look is the natural grain within the film. We can replicate that with an on one very, very quickly and easily. We're going to add another filter and this is a bit of a sneaky way of doing it. We're going to click black and white. Now I don't want this portrait to be black and white. So we're not actually going to use the color version of black and white. We're going to turn that off. And what we can do is come up here. If you look at the top where it says black and white, on the right hand side, there's a little dustbin. And if you get rid, if you click that, it will take off your filter. Next to it is a little cog. We're going to click the cog. And under mode, we're going to change the mode to luminosity. Now the black and white isn't doing anything to the image at all. There is no color effect happening. Down here at the bottom, it says film grain. We can now use the film grain within the settings and change it how we like. There's lots of different grains to choose from. Some of my favorites were T-Max 3200, which is a bit much for this portrait. If we zoom in and see how much grain that's adding, that's a lot. I don't want that much, I just want a touch. One of my other favorite films was T-Max 400, which is quite nice and soft, or even an XP2 400. There we go, that's a nice film grain. If I turn that off and on, you can see it's adding a nice spot of film grain to the portrait. That's exactly what I'm after. So if we go back to look at the overall portrait, it's looking really nice. It's bright. It's got some softness to it. This sky is where my eyes being drawn to the most. So I want to kind of dull that down a little bit. Now I do know that when I shot this, the sky is overexposed. There's no detail in there. So I can't use the exposure controls to bring a sky into it. What I am going to do is import a sky and use that as an overlay. So we're going to go up here to add filter and we're going to click textures. Now we're going to ignore what it's done to the picture immediately. We don't care about that right now. We're going to click on import here. It brings up this new extras manager. We're going to import a texture. I've already got a category called Mike and that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to click import, go to my folder. And here's a sky that I bought from Shutterstock. I'm going to click open. It's going to go into the category Mike, click OK, and it's now available for me to use. So up here under category, I'm going to go down to my category, Mike. And there is the sky. Now, it looks a bit weird right now. It doesn't look exactly as I want it. We can change that though. So first of all, we're gonna change the mode to darker. And we can see immediately, we can see this blue coming in. Obviously it's the wrong orientation and we can spin that around a couple of times like that to get it in the right rotation. There is the sky, roughly how I want it. It's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. So what I need to do is get rid of the sky over the rest of the image and only have it over this white area of sky. And we can use a mask to do that. I'm going to click on the little plus here next to the textures. The little plus will give me a mask. At the moment, the mask is white, so everything's showing through. And I only want this little area of white up here. So I'm actually going to invert the mask. Now I've got a big brush. I want it a nice big brush. I want a big soft feather on it. Let's make the feather about 60 or so. And I also want to change up here. Mode says paint out. I want to change it to paint in because I'm going to paint in the mask. And I'm just going to gently brush up in the sky here. And we can see that ever so slowly, because my opacity is low, it's gently bringing in the sky. There we go. Now, I don't want this to be too huge. At the moment, that now is starting to look like a CGI image. It's too fake. Obviously, with the bright situation we're in now, with the bright sky, you wouldn't see that much blue in the sky. So what I can do is bring the opacity down here. Let's bring it down somewhere around there. 
All I want is a little hint of blue in the sky. If I turn it off and on, you can see it's just ever so slightly and the slightest smudge of cloud. Don't want to go nuts, I just want to have a slight amount in the sky. Okay, we're almost done. I think now I want to go one step further and make it look even more awesome. Let's add one more filter. We're going to add another texture. And this time I'm going to click Bokeh. Bokeh. Everybody loves that, don't they? There's a couple preset within on one. And playing around earlier, I think number two is what I like. And I'm going to change the mode to lighter to really brighten it up. But that's now too much. So let's bring the opacity down somewhere around 40. It's not going to do too much to the image. We can see it's just given another kiss. It's a bit too much on their faces. I wonder if we moved it around a little bit. Let's rotate it slightly or flipped it. Yeah, whichever way we go, it's going to be on their faces. But it doesn't bother me too much. I'm really liking that. And if we go before and after of the whole image, that's where we started from with the camera raw file. And that's where we ended up with just a couple of minutes playing in on one raw. Now, obviously, with a wedding, you wouldn't do that with every single image. You would do that on the ones that they're going to put in their album and the ones you're going to put on your blog. But you can see how quickly and easily you can use on one develop settings and effect settings to make your portraits go from not too bad. I mean, I'm quite happy with my out of camera picture. That's very nice to something quite stunning. Well, thanks for listening, guys, and enjoy the rest of your summer. I'm Mike Long, and I'll see you next time.